What's up everybody, Justin here, back with part 2 of Year in Wrestling Reloaded 1994. I was, ended part 2, part 1, I ended talking about WCW pay-per-view, some of my favorites. I was talking about Bash at the Beach on 94, really good pay-per-view, as I said, it was their biggest grossing pay-per-view highest buy rate pay-per-view of all time because it was Hogan Flair for the world title so now uh, I'm going to talk about let's uh, review Fall Brawl Fall Brawl 94 really good show I'm not going to review the every match I'll just talk about they did a uh what was it called? Triangle. I think it was called Triangle Match. In my opinion, ECW did it first when they called it the three-way dance. ECW, in my opinion, invented the triple threat three-way matches because they did them first before any other company in America. Maybe Japan did them first. I don't know. Maybe Mexico did. I don't know. I'm talking about American wrestling. WWF, WCW, ECW. ECW did the three-way matches first. In my opinion, WCW stole the idea, but it was a little bit different, and they called it the triangle match at Fall Brawl 94. But it was well done. It was... Uh, the winner would get a world title shot against Hulk Hogan. Big Van Vader defeated the Guardian Angel in seven minutes. And then Vader had to take on Sting. They went to sudden death. No winner. So they went to sudden death after the sudden death round. There was no winner. So then they made a 15 minute uh, time limit for five. 15 minute time limit has been declared. And then there were five minute overtime rounds that had taken place. Anyways, Vader wins against Sting. It was pretty brutal. It was hard hitting. They beat the hell out of each other. I think Sting uh, fell down by accident or. Didn't mean to fall. I don't remember really, but I think Harley Race got involved and made Sting fall down or something. Or the ref got in the way, I, something like that. What I do remember is a hard-hitting, awesome matchup. Vader won. He defeated the Guardian Angel and Sting in the same night. And then you had the War Games. Uh, Team Dustin Rhodes, Dusty Rhodes, the Nasty Boys defeated Colonel Robert Parker, Terry Funk, Bunkhouse Buck, and Arn Anderson in the war games. It was a pretty damn good war games. At least the crowd was into it. They were pretty hype. So now let's talk about uh, Halloween Havoc 94. Not many, not much to talk about. Except the main event, really. Hulk Hogan defended the world title against Ric Flair in a cage. If Flair lost, he must retire. Career-ending uh, matchup. Or it was called a retirement match. And for some reason, Mr. T was a guest referee. Nobody need to see Mr. T nine years after WrestleMania won. I don't think the fans really cared that much. Hogan brought him in because he was probably his boy. He was probably good friends with Mr. T and got him a payday. Because uh, Ted Turner at the time, the guy would give anybody a payday. Basically, if Hogan said, bring him in, they got a payday. A nasty boy's. Nasty Boys were actually good. When uh, they were in their prime after 96, they were not in their prime. So, I'm just saying, people, wrestlers, Hogan brought in. 
Nasty Boys, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Jimmy Hardy brought in. Probably brought in uh, Avalanche, formerly Earthquake. And I, th I believe Hogan got Honky Tonk Man hired for his short, short run in WCW. That was a big waste of money. So, uh, anyways, Hogan defeats Ric Flair in the cage. 19 minutes, 25 seconds. Ric Flair career, Ric Flair's career ended. No, it didn't. We all knew it wasn't going to end. So, uh, now I'll talk about... So, yeah, Starcade. Let me get to Starcade. That was a mess. Except for, like, two two to three matches, maybe. Starcade 94. The, the first uh, matchup at Starcade 94 was... Big Van Vader defeated U.S. champion Hacksaw Jim Duggan. That was actually good. They beat the hell out of each other. Alex Wright then. Alex Wright. The guy was a young up-and-coming rookie. Pretty damn good young talent. Alex Wright, Doss Wonder Kid, defeated the future, defeated the future Triple H. Alex Wright defeated Triple H at a Starcade. Think about that. That's pretty hilarious. Triple H could have been a damn good heel in that blue blood type gimmick for WCW, but I think his contract ran out and he talked to Regal and Regal said, you, you want to go to WWF, go there. Trust me, Regal told him to go there, so he listened to Regal and went there. Because uh, Regal just probably could see the writing on the wall. WCW didn't want to done anything with uh, Triple H. Just like they didn't do much with Steve Austin and let him go. Just like they didn't do much with uh, Cactus Jack and they let him go. That's crazy. WCW, at one time, uh, yeah, one time WCW had The Undertaker. Mick Foley, Triple H, Steve Austin before WWF had him. That's crazy. Four of the biggest uh, names ever in wrestling. Four names every wrestling fan knows. Undertaker, Steve Austin, Mick Foley, Triple H. Every wrestling fan knows them. And they were in WCW first. My God, WCW dropped the ball with uh, keeping them and pushing them as uh, main eventers. I guess Bischoff, well, Bischoff is not to blame for letting Undertaker go. That's uh, Ole Anderson. Thought Undertaker would never draw a dime in wrestling. What a dumbass he, what a dumbass, bitter old bastard he was. Can you imagine somebody actually told Undertaker, I believe as Ole Anderson said, "You, I don't see anything in you. You're never going to draw a dime in the wrestling business. My God, he was wrong. So, I don't know. You could blame WCW for letting them go, but I don't think Bischoff would have made them what, what they became in WWF. All those guys needed to work with Vince. Because in the late 90s, early 90s, Vince was uh, still a genius. With uh, pushing, creating stars and characters. Uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin got over by himself. I don't think they were going to push him that much. Yes, he won King of the Ring, but he was not even supposed to. Triple H was supposed to in 96 win King of the Ring. Stone Cold Steve Austin and Austin 316 and that King of the Ring 96 promo, which I was actually there live. 
I was uh, 12 years old. I was there alive. The Austin 316 promo, the Austin 316 t-shirts made and forced Vince to push Steve Austin as a top guy, as a top heel. And then, of course, the fans turned him from heel to babyface, and he was still acting like a heel. <coughs> so anyways, uh, Star K94, Triple H lost to Alex Wright. That's pretty unreal. Looking back on it, Mr. T wrestled. Why? Guess his, uh, Bischoff did it as a favor to Hogan. Put Mr. T in a match. In 94, this guy's Mr. T, I think it was in his late 40s. He wasn't a wrestler. The guy was probably beat up, broken down. It was not good. Mr. T defeated Kevin Sullivan in three minutes, 48 seconds, and it was bad. Sting defeated the Avalanche, who is formerly Earthquake. I guess that it was good. It was 15 minutes. I, I'm sure it was good because both guys knew how to work. Main event was god awful. Star K94 probably had the worst main event in Starcade history ever. It was just bad. Hulk Hogan defended the world title against his uh, his bro, his best friend at the time, Brutus Beefcake. I don't know what the hell they called him, the butcher. The guy had like a thousand gimmicks, different gimmicks. The guy was Brutus Beefcake. The guy was the butcher, the Zodiac, Booty Man. Good Lord, Booty Man. A wrestler would never get over if you name him Booty Man. God awful gimmick. And uh, then he was uh, the Disciple. NWO Disciple. It's a miracle Brutus Beefcake was in WCW that long and got paid. For all those years. Only got paid... Because he's Hogan's friend and he rolled on the back of Hogan for his whole career. Brutus Beefcake would be nothing. The guy's career would have been nothing. Not even a mid-carder if he didn't know Hogan. And Hogan had him, had him a job for like twenty over 20 years in the wrestling business. He got paid a lot of money because he knew Hogan. Got paid for like 9 to 10 years by WWF. Or 8 years, 9 years he was there. He was there from WrestleMania 1, I believe, all the way to WrestleMania 9. So, nine, 8, 9 years. Then he's in WCW like 5, 6 years. It was bad. Hogan defeated Brutus Beefcake in 12 minutes. The match was shit. The main event was shit. It was sad and stupid. And I love Hogan. I'm a Hogan mark. But it was bad. So that's Star Kid 94. The, my favorite WCW pay-per-view of 94 is right here. Slamboree 94. That's the best pay-per-view WCW did in 94 in my opinion then also Bash at the Beach was good too now let's get to ECW some of their super shows from 94 they put on let's get to talking about what I loved I loved ECW I was a huge mark for the original ECW their first show, Big Show in 94, it's on the WWE Network under ECW Super Shows. It's the night the line was crossed. You had uh, the main event. I'll talk about that last, but other matches. You had Jimmy Snuka. 
take on Tommy Dreamer, and Tommy Dreamer survived the Jimmy Superfly Snooka splash off the top. He survived and actually kicked out of it. Tommy Dreamer was also the Rookie of the Year in 94 in ECW. So then, other matches, you had the Public Enemy and the Bruise Brothers basically beat the crap out of each other in a hardcore brawl. You had uh, J.T. Smith take on Mike Awesome, where J.T. Smith looked like his back got broken, just bent against the guardrail. It was insane. And the top rope snapped. The top rope actually snapped on Mike Awesome, and he fell on his face in the ring. That was pretty damn funny. But it was also an accident. Also, you had Kevin Sullivan and Taz take on the original Sheik and Pat Tanaka. That was a hardcore brawl. I believe the Sheik tried to throw fireballs and it was botched. Or maybe it wasn't a botched fireball. I don't remember really. Main event was historic. First ever triple threat three-way dance in American pro wrestling in the United States First ever three-way dance, triple threat, basically. It went one hour, one hour time limit draw. The franchise, Shane Douglas, Terry Funk, Sabu for the ECW world title. First ever three-way dance. It was great. It was damn good. It was really damn good. After it, they did interviews Terry Funk was like crying, saying how much he loved ECW and had the world title with him. And he had dried up blood all over his face. Really good promo from Terry Funk after the night the line was crossed. And Shane Douglas interrupted him and said, "Give me, just hand me the damn title right now. And Terry Funk said, okay, you want it? Threw it in his face. They started brawling. The show ended. Sadly, this ends my part two because my camera's about to cut off. So I will do a part three year in wrestling.